थैंक यू डॉक्टर अनुज माहेश्वरी डॉक्टर जयंत पांडा एंड रेस्पेक्टेड चेयरपर्सन फॉर योर नाइस इंट्रोडक्शन द टॉपिक इज वेरी टाइम ऑन इट बिकॉज रिसेंटली इंडिया हेज कवर्ड मोर देन हंड्रेड क्रोड वैक्सीनेशन मोस्टली इन द एडल्ट पॉपुलेशन सो एडल्ट इम्यूनाइजेशन वेदर इन द कोविड एस्पेक्ट और नॉन कोविड एस्पेक्ट now it is a million dollar question whether child apart from the child immunization or to some extent adolescent immunization the india should go for the adult immunization if you see the history of 5000 years infectious disease has governed the history of mankind fall of roman emperor was due to the plague that is called justinian plague beginning of the dark age in europe was due to the black death spanish set up colony in latin america because the latin american population failed to withstand the small pox that the spanish carried from europe to latin america human beings started fight as an infection with the discovery of the germ theory then cleanliness and sanitation that is a pioneer work of the florence nightingale then discovery of the antibiotics and finally the vaccine the vaccinology starts its journey from the discovery of small pox vaccination by dr edward jenner in 1796 it get a momentum with the discovery of the rabies vaccine by louis pasteur in 1980 in 1885 subsequently salmonella spit developed the cholera vaccine plague vaccine typhoid vaccine and another milestone was 1927 the discovery of the bcg vaccine and with the establishment of who unicef vaccine become popular or vaccinology become a mainstay of uh, one one armament in the hand of the physician to combat or to prevent the infectious diseases but what was in india there is a lot of hype lot of story regarding the healthcare services in the british period we know the establishment of the calcutta medical college we know the establishment of the dhaka medical college lahore medical college madras medical college and apparently it looks that british done lot for the healthcare system of india but in 1946 when he reviewed the article for the gma editor april published he has written no country in the world is medically so bad served as india because government never considered the health of the people as is first and foremost concern of a national wealth as must at is consider law and order and the police and the military too the frustrated editor expressed again in 1947 the among the total death in india that time 48% death was children death below 10 years almost 2 lakhs pregnant women death was happened by 1947 in a single year from 1932 to 40, 41 there is a huge death from the cholera smallpox plague and active tb case during the independence was about the 2.5 million but all the disease was preventable british raj probably done nothing to prevent prevent all these disease and the same to the indian so indian bank on the ulai chandi to for uh, as a old ship to prevent the cholera or depend on the shitala mother, mother shitala devi to prevent or to be cured from the uh, small pox infection british raj done something that is the adaptation of the epidemic act in 1896 or they established the school of tropical medicine in in 1916 for research of, on the tropical diseases but these are done basically colonial government approach was to protect their people and to prevent spread from india to england nothing for the benefit of the indians only 10% of india were under proper medical care before the independence first structured health policy was adopted by the british government that is in 1943 there is a bhore committee and our dr vidhan chandra rai was one of his member and this report was accepted by the british raj that time and also the independent government of india after the in independence that is considered the first reform in the health policy in india and bhore committee duly and correctly given stress on integration of the preventive and curative healthcare system and bhore committee mentioned that the six pillar disease is responsible for for more than 75% death in india that time that is the diphtheria tetanus polio whooping cough measles tuberculosis finally india got freedom in 1947 15 august in the first speech pandit jawaharlal nehru given due stress on disease prevention and treatment 
he he mentioned the ending of the poverty and ignorance and disease and inequality of opportunity will be the aim of the independent indian government so after independence government of india adopted the vode committee policy and established all the measures uh, to prevent the diseases particularly the communicable diseases and government has taken or established so many committees kartar committee mukherji committee shivas committee every committee given due stage in prevention of the diseases particularly the infectious disease 1978 government of india they introduced the expanded program of unification but this epi was mostly mostly confined to the urban areas so 1985 government of india changed the character of the epi to uip that is universal uh, immunization program that include both the, the rural and the urban population and measles was added and typhoid was excluded so then then another 20 years passed in 2001 then government set up a committee to review the status of immunization whether the status of immunization or all the immunization is the sixth disease that was the last 50 years is going on whether should change the policy so 2005 to consolidate the immunization policy government set up the national rural health mission ultimately 2013 it was renamed as a national health mission that means it will include both the rural and urban population some changes happen in 2008 to 2012 the six killer vaccination against the six killer disease was remain unchanged and rather than given due stresses but by that time hepatitis b and influenza uh, vaccination was included particularly to some extent to the uh, high risk population and je vaccine in certain zone of the india but up to 2012 focus of india government was basically immunization on the infant on children and pregnant women nothing to the adult why i will come later on whatever may be the in in the in that 50 60 years the massive immunization uh, resulted in fall of the fall of the communication communicable disease death from 66% which was during the independence to 30% so definitely india got got some achievement in preventing the communicable disease from its complication mortality and morbidity but still there is 30% death Uh, still is happening till now due to the communicable disease in india which we failed to prevent so if we go to now if you go to the world world vaccination uh, policy uh, in the beginning of the 21st century world slightly moved from the basically which was in the previous century was children and infant and pregnant women slightly moved to the uh, vaccination to the adolescent vaccination and rubella and hpv become more popular worldwide but not so in india but whatever may be in india again we are coming back to the indian situation in then 50 years there is a lot of changes in the socio economic uh, situation and people's uh, healthcare facility expand to sub uh, expand from rural to urban area as a result the life expectancy which was 34 years during the independence it has almost reached in 2006 in near about the 70 years and the aging population which was uh, if we consider aging uh, above 50 years almost become four times in in last 60 years so this data from minister of health and family welfare the population in 2011 below 15 years is will around now was 31% but it is projected in 2036 it will be 20% that means younger population percentage is decreasing whereas the age above 50 years in 2011 was approximately 193 million which is projected to be 404 million in 2036 that is almost 27% of the total population that means in the coming next 10 years the aging population will increase rather than uh, younger population will decrease another interesting data from ministry of health uh, found in 2017 the in the population whose age is above particular cv date that is the cardiovascular date is 36% in the between the age 45 to 54 years whereas almost 45% when the age is above above 70 years and diabetes diabetes prevalence cvd obesity they are increasing exponentially so interesting point is the non communicable disease this prevalence in increases but if there is a infection in a patient having suffering from non communicable disease complication in increasing many fold 
that means though the number of or prevalence of communicable diseases increase decreasing but the prevalence of non communicable diseases increasing so complication in the non communicable disease is increasing the complication due to the ncd so that is why communicable and non communicable disease are interweaving if there is communicable disease and the patient have some non communicable disease like diabetes complication increases if patient have a non communicable disease like heart failure patient develop influenza the complication is further increases so these are basically interrelated so we have to prevent both the anyway we have to prevent both that should be the motto in the coming years so this is a who data the who data indicate that among the world data 30% of the disease burden particularly of the infectious disease are in india so india harbors a significant vaccine preventable disease of the world 60% of diphtheria case are in india 40% of the tetanus case in india 17% of pertussis case of world is india and 17% of rubella case of the whole world is india but again indian reporting system is very poor so actual burden may be more than what is projected so vaccine preventable disease india india is a is a, a, a india is scattering is a almost uh, near over 50% cases of the vaccine preventable disease of the world so if we can prevent the diseases by vaccination we can reduce the complication we can reduce the hospitalization we can reduce the mortality we can reduce the ccu admission and finally we can reduce the economic stress on both family and and on on government and also in last 50 years we have observed several outbreak of vaccine preventable diseases in india such as varicella outbreak hepatitis a outbreak influenza outbreak several episodes of influenza outbreak and measles and you remember at uh, 20 years back there is a severe measles outbreak in uh, in siliguri uh, district and lot of death because siliguri district even from the hpv infection burden is very high till now in, in india and influenza related respiratory illness is quite high uh, more, more than 50% uh, of the in adult population is suffering from the uh, uh, from from influenza related respiratory uh, in, in infection that is why influenza vaccination now government of india has labeled as a desirable vaccine considering the fact that 50% death of adult is due to the respiratory infection and among this 50% another 50% due to the influenza infection so if you can prevent the influenza infection you can prevent a lot of death again what is happening in elderly population in elderly population immune system start declining particularly after the 50 years and the adult population which now in day is scattering the epi there is a vaccination process started from 1978 so many of the elderly if i cut off do the consider the cut off value of 50 years so many of the elderly above 50 years are not properly vaccinated in childhood that is happening to our uh, our our situation and mortality due to those vaccine preventable diseases is very high so now the adult population which india is scattering is not properly vaccinated and this population are very much prone to develop different type of infection particularly vaccine preventable infection against which we have some measures but in india not only india in the world we are not properly giving due uh, due stress or due importance on the adult vaccination in adult vaccination till now not included in the national policy in some of the western countries western countries regulatory body recommend but again this is in usa if you see the statistics only 2% of the adult population is not only uh, have a only aware also only 2% got the adult vaccination mostly 95% even not aware about the uh, about the vaccination whatever india in in adult vaccination have that is only tetanus during the pregnancy and and je vaccination in certain endemic area so though ima api rssdi gsi isn different professional bodies has recommended vaccination particularly pneumococcal and influenza vaccination against the high risk person government of india till now have now reservation for to recommend this vaccination in a mass basis but again this this bodies has recommended mostly the pneumococcal and influenza vaccination but still there is a wide scope of diseases that can be prevented by by the adult vaccination 
which till now not, not only not recommended by the body is also not accepted by the government of india these are the uh, uh, some recommendation few years that done on behalf of api uh, to prevent the uh, influenza infection particularly because i told the 50% death in adult due to respiratory tract infection and, and among the respiratory infection their 50% is almost due to the influenza infection so vaccine coverage at 2008 is very good in the infant and children almost 27 million newborn is vaccinated 100 million children are vaccinated 30 million uh, pregnant women vaccinated but when we are getting data from the adult population in a study at jodhpur aims the they they mentioned that even the post exposure coverage for tetanus was only 42% and rabies for 20% that should be covered on 100% but for hepatitis b it is only 8% typhoid 3% influenza which is very lethal for the elderly particularly having the uh, complication is only 1% that means adult vaccinations awareness and vaccination proper is very poor in india also in usa so usa coverage only 2% so need some relook to uh, to the scope of the vaccination and we should rethink not only on behalf of the we physicians our bodies our uh, bodies our regulatory bodies icm and government of india now all should give a relook so but but to make it a popular there are some barriers barriers is universal access whether we can produce that much of vaccine that can cover the whole population of india with the adult vaccination poor disease surveillance system government of india frequently point out this point then what is the data that this if you give the vaccination is can prevent the mortality no proper data is we have and vaccine hesitancy there is a lot of vaccine hesitancy that we have observed during the initial period of the covid vaccination so ministry always ask the proper data that uh, that the these type sorts of vaccine can prevent this type of mortality or morbidity that we are lacking we talk about the vaccine preventable diseases we talk about that all vaccination but do not keep data or produce data or publish data that can influence the uh, government of india so national uh, vaccine policy basically focus on infant and children and pregnant women immunization not on adult basically we should generate data we our the bodies rssi acp api all should come out with data and provide government the data because 2011 when the advisory body in immunization sit to get a review the vaccination policy they mention that point that we have no proper reliable data to make it a compulsory or to make to include this adult vaccination in the national vaccination schedule so it, the responsibility lies on not only on the individual physician also on the bodies like acp api rssdi csi to produce the reliable data that that can influence the government to take the actual policy so amar to sen has has nicely has mentioned ensured that economic growth without investment of the human development in unsustainable and unethical he always gives stress on the healthcare because healthcare and education to basic tool of the uh, uh, of the growth of a nation so if we come to the end in summary government india should provide the recommendation for the adult vaccination because still now 30% infection or the communicable disease still in the india and lot of death still now is happening in india uh, in spite of 60 years successful vaccination so these are basically the adult vaccination uh, can prevent another further further uh, decrease of percentage of the death we should have a improved recording and reporting system on infectious disease we should have vaccination at least should be started in the high risk group for as hepatitis b vaccination for the healthcare personnel and we definitely need a operation research, research that we i am giving stage so in conclusion historically primary focus was on vaccination was in children childhood and pregnancy in 21st century older adults are challenging the population young and older adults are economically productive because many of the elderly population are getting pension and that is the only source of income of the family so we have to we have to save the older data we have to keep them healthy and disease burden of the elderly poses a huge economic burden not only to the family also to the to the society so adult immunization should be the next next new healthcare priority vaccination against the covid 19 proof that mass vaccination is possible 
and india can can uh, can generate lot of vaccination and can uh, and can uh, and can cover entire population with the adult vaccination so what should be the slogan of 21st century this should be the prevent death from communicable disease prevent complication from non communicable disease and healthy aging has uh, healthy aging is our motto so thank you widespread existence of preventable disease and death is a disgrace to the society which tolerates it this is a picture drawn by me see the both younger and elderly both can suffer from disease and starvation thank you